In today's video, we're going to demonstrate the best control layout in League of Legends Wild Rift as well as the best settings so you can have the most fluid gaming experience. Let's go. Just for the thrill of it, nothing counterfeit with you. Hey guys, how's everyone doing? This is your guy Assassin Day. Before we get started, I know 50% of your beautiful sexy people have yet to like, subscribe, and turn the bell on to all notification bells so you can join the coolest, greatest, the baddest channel in the League of Legends, World Rift. So what you're waiting for, go ahead and do those right now. And make sure to subscribe to our brand new dedicated YouTube live stream channel with the link in the description. Make sure to go ahead and do that because we're going to be live streaming for 8 to 10 hours every single day with your favorite content. So what you're waiting for, let's dive into the video. All right, let's move on to the in-game setting, the control setting and the game experience setting. What happens is you want to enter a practice mode. This way you actually simulate the actual game. And then, so everything you have here is going to be what you're going to have in actual game. So you want to be in the practice mode. Click on setting. The all chat on the very top, it's just up to you. The frame rate is up to you. The scoreboard, the full screen, half screen is also up to you. I like to have the full screen. This way you can click on the scoreboard. It's going to take over the whole thing, but it's still transparent. So you can still do everything, like okay. you can move around and still check the scoreboard. The reason why I like the full screen is this way I can move around different champions, you know, on the scoreboard. So I can match mid lane with mid lane, jungle with jungle. So I can easily compare uh, where's the weak link, where's the strong link, who is, farm, who is farmed up, where the vertical layout doesn't really have the comparison. Make sure you have the floating text, this option on. This floating text option allows you to see damage dealt to the enemy. Okay, it's very, very important because you want to know that how much damage you're doing all the time. So you're starting developing a habit. Okay, let's say you know your how much damage you're doing with Avalanche E, and you can use that in conjunction with your Smite, then you can execute objectives at a higher HP line. Another option I like to mention in the general setting is the health bar name display. I usually have it as none because you have if you have other options, it will display your champion name. And then usually in the game, you want to be focused on which champion I want to focus on, not which player. You want to focus on the champion, you want to focus on the actual gameplay. So just have it to none. Even having champion, I think is too much. Or it shows up Akali. I mean, it's like, it's almost acting like you don't know who you're playing against. So you don't know who you are, right? Just turn it off. This way you can focus on a clean feed and just focus on the gameplay. So let's move on to the setting. The portrait lock option, I usually have it as off. I mean, I actually always have it as a lock. Uh, uh, off because you can always use your smart lock option. You know, you auto attack and drag your auto attack. Let's say there are two champion target. I can always use my attack, you know, drag my auto attack to select which target I want to lock onto, or I can simply, you know, drag my skills or drag my ultimate, drag my skills to select which target I want to get onto. It's already pretty accurate, but if you have path. this option, this control option as display champ uh, portrait lock, what will happen is it will actually display like a set of icons on the uh, on the on screen which I think might be too crowded, you know, so I usually have this option, this portrait lock option on off, and I would just use smart lock and ability lock, so you know, individual I mean, ability, I'll drag so those skills nice. to select the target that I want to hit. And you want to get used to that very importantly, because on a phone, again, the most important thing is you only have a limited amount of display and you want to utilize the most amount of display for the best viewing experience. So you can see the most stuff without a lot of stuff popping up and blocking your vision. Now, the targeting priority, I have it on low health absolute because a lot of, a lot of times the tank will have lowest percentage, lower percentage than the enemy ADC, but the tank will still have more HP because tank is tank. They build full HP, they have a lot of health where you want to target their backline squishy. So lowest health absolute is uh, preferable in, in my opinion, but it's not like it matters because in actual combat, I'm Good used to drag, again, dragging my smart lock to select the target that I want to lock. The next option is to follow the force attack uh, follow. Make sure you have this on off. What happens is if you have it on on, if you try to walk Everyone away and try to auto attack targets, uh, let's say you try to walk away, right? <laughs> like, good. like, look, if you were kind of in range, if you click on, if I click auto attack, it's going to force me to turn around to auto attack the target. And this is really, really bad for kiting because in the game, you always want to prioritize your movement over your attack, your ability usage. Let's say this way, Let's if I turn it off, turn now if I hit attack, I look, it's not going to work if I'm not in range. But the moment I'm getting in range, it's going to hit auto attack. This allows you to prioritize your movement so it's more accurate so you don't get forced to push back. The system doesn't push you back. You want to be Everyone make sure you're running away auto attack, running away auto attack. Up. You want to make sure it's really, really accurate. So again, have the force attack follow off. The dash and move direction, make sure you have this one off. The reason why is if you have it on, what happens, Wait, let's say I'm, I'm trying to attack this target, right? This guy right here in front of me. I'm just all attacking him. Right, but if I hit my W, watch. 
it will actually double me, it will actually push me all the way to the furthest range of this skill. So let's say you try to farm a red cam, it's just always, it's not the most pro, like optimized, you know, let's say I'm trying to hit them. Even if I lock down to him, right? If I hit this skill, it's gonna push me to the furthest range. So this is why you wanna have it off because if you have it off, what will happen is now, let's say I'm right next to him. If I hit W, you see it will dash right on top of him and I'll get a shield. And this is very, very important when you play characters like Shivana, for example, when you use Shivana's ultimate, when you use Lee Sin skill two, or we use Trinimir's dash. It's very important because you want to be dashing right on top of them. You don't want to dash sense. over. You know, you want to you want to make sure that you dash right on top. So get this uh, turn this option off. Do not have the dashing move direction on. Action button, the move stick type. Make sure you have this as locked. Okay, do not have it on default or follow because you want to get used to having I this little movement wheel on the left bottom corner always locked here. You don't want to be use your left thumb in the middle of the screen try to move your movement wheel. You want to get used to have your left thumb on the left bottom corner and you want to train your thumb to be like that. The reason for that is again, you just don't want to have a clean feed in the middle of the screen. You don't want your finger to block the screen. You don't want anything to block the screen. So make sure you have this option. The move stick type is locked. And then the lock button center, this one, make sure you have this one off also because this is what happens. If you have it as on, now the ability center is locked. If I, if I just tap the win. attack, watch. If I just have the attack on the top side, it's almost instantly considering me as dragging to the top. Like it's already locking to this person. It's already locking to the very top. If I, if I just hit it, you can see the instantly recognize, it's instantly dragging the skill to the edge of this attack, which is not what I want, you know? I just wanna hit attack sometimes. So what you wanna do is have this one um, off because your fingers are really, you know, fat. And then you hit the button on the edge of the button, on the edge of the skill, it oh, will still it start from fresh. I can still select this button and start from my center to select the target I want. But if I just, again, if I have this one that's on, if I click on the target on the, you know, on the edge by accident, you will, you will have the smart lock already on the edge of the button, which is really inaccurate. Again, you wanna make sure you have this lock button center as off. The next option is action cancel method. This one you can have alternative or default. It's based on preference, to be honest. A lot of people, most people have it on default. This way, if you want to cancel a skill, you just move it to the X on the top right corner, you'll cancel a skill, right? Basically, this is how you cancel skills. But if you have this on alternative, what happens is if you drag outside of the skill, you'll cancel it, which is not optimal. You want to make sure that, because sometimes you want to slide your skill. But if you happen to slide very fast, you might cancel it. So just make sure you have this on default. Button aiming sensitivity, this is based on your preference. I have it on low like a fairly low, about a one fourth of the entire bar. This way I can aim better, you know, because you don't want to be having your skill like flying all over the place. You know, you don't want to have them all over the place at all. You want to be making sure that you, when you drag your skill, it can be accurate. So, but that's just a personal preference. Fix this option at your own liking, but I recommend at a lower, you know, lower button aiming sensitivity. The dead zone size, I've turned on to the highest. A lot of people didn't understand what dead zone size is, to be honest, a current dead zone size uh, function doesn't really work that well. Basically what it does is you wanna, Today when you try to hit a skill that's a tapping test. skill, you don't really wanna drag them. Let's say you were playing Yasuo, right? EQ flash. You don't really wanna drag the Q. You wanna just do EQ, right? Q, you wanna hit it. But sometimes if the dead zone is too small, just by ten, just by tapping it, the system will count it as dragging it, you know? So it's actually really bad. So I recommend it have the dead zone to the highest. But right now, I think the function is not the, the best. And then I already sent you my recommendations. Hopefully they change it really quickly. Now let's move on to camera. Regarding the camera, I like to have aim panning on. Aim panning is basically saying like, if I want to aim a skill towards the bottom side of the screen, it's going to drag the screen, as you can see right here, right? Anything you, you drag towards the bottom side. But if you drag towards the top side or just like, anywhere, this 180 degree, it doesn't change the camera. Anything you drag from this 180 degree, it will actually change the camera and it pull it downwards. Endless this is actually just a really good mobile gaming experience. It's really easy for you to see enemies on top side of the screen, but sometimes it's really hard for you to aim people who are on the down side of the screen. So I think this option is really, really good. And then just make sure you have it on. The ability mini cam and the semi lock camera, I actually recommend you turn it off. If you're an experienced player, if you're a PC player, come to Wall Rift, you can have the semi lock camera on. What, what it is, is basically there's a little eye on the, on the screen, which you can adjust the position of it. And you, by sliding this eye, you can see I can adjust the camera and then you, can, you can click on the eye to reset it. Let's say I'm dragging like this and it doesn't matter how I move or how I attack, it's always gonna be, as you can see, it's always gonna be like this angle. And then when I tap it, is go back to the, the default, the reset. So if you're a PC player used to like this, you can always have it. I like to have it off because what I like to do is I like to use my right index finger 
to drag on the right top side of the screen of my phone and just slide it. This is what I do all the time because you use, I use mainly three fingers to play the game, my two thumbs and my right index finger. So this way I can slide the screen anywhere I want and then when I lose it, it go back to default directly. So I don't have to tap the eye all the time. You know what I mean? I guess it's just something that you can't get used to, but I'm already used to sliding. So I just have it off. And then this way, again, have a clean feed on my screen. I don't have anything extra to show up. The next thing you want to have is an ability mini cam. This basically says if you have it on, let's say if I use my Q. Look, when I move outside of the screen, the Q again. When I move outside of my screen, you can see in the top left corner, there's a little, little frame that shows up like of the target that I hit. You know, like, look, oh, that guy's being queued. But you really know who you're getting on. Again, for the purpose of having, having a clean feed, you wanna make sure that you have this option off, okay? Because this way, like, look, if I move out of the screen, I don't have this a little screen to pop up to take, take away some real estate. I wanna make sure my entire screen has as much empty space as possible where you can see the battle, see the battle, uh, see the what's going on in the battlefield. If you're used to iPhone, desk and spectre panning, make sure you have this to invert it. Because when you die, basically when you slide the screen, it will actually add like iPhone. When you scroll down, the, the thing goes up and all kind of stuff. Have that inverted. But again, it's not that it doesn't matter because you're dead. So it's just a personal preference. The camera pan, pan sensitivity, this is important. I like it. It's usually defaulted in the middle right here. And I like it to a little bit higher, around 75%. This allows me to pan the map Find across, like pan the map with my right index finger on the top side of your screen. Like you want to be holding the screen like this, right? The thumbs control the movement, the joystick. This is the head abilities and this index finger to hit the screen. So as you can see right here, I'm gonna be moving the screen like Waste this. You know what I mean? Like the, my left in, left thumb is move the joystick. Right thumb is control the HUD on the right bottom side, the abilities and all that kind of good stuff. And the right index finger is control this large area of the screen where I can slide it around and then control the camera. So when I slide it around, Quiet I can steps. look at enemies, what ability they use, what, how much HP they have left. It's very important for you to spy, to slide the screen to continue to see how, to see more information on the battlefield instead of just looking at a minimap. Minimap is step one, one of the most important step, but then you wanna get used to panning your map to Waste see how, how much HP enemy has, what skill they have used, what crucial skills you have used so you can dive in, jump in at the right moment. Because let's say if I'm jungler, I'm moving from mid to top side, you know, if I have a sensitivity very low, it's really hard for me to pen to the top, but if I have the, around 75%, I can just Quiet easily steps. pen my map and I can see exactly what's happening on the top side, you know, and I'm still moving to the top side. This is just an option that I really like at 75%. Moving on, the utilities. The mini app auto pathing, I have it off, but this is not really important. You can have it on. Basically, when you click on the side of the mini map, you will move your character directly towards it, but you usually don't do that anyways. You know, you usually don't move your character like this. So. This is not PC, uh, where it takes forever. It actually moves really fast. So I like I like just have this option off, so I don't accidentally touch a mini, uh, the mini map, and then my characters start going all over the place. The level of suggestions have this off. Wording aim assist actually have this on. So let's say I'm getting close to the uh, to a bush. Look, it's gonna snap to the closest bush right next to you. I'm walking to a bush, right? If I just tap the ward it's gonna ward the bush that's right next Quiet to you. Step. But sometimes if I wanna be more accurate, you can just hold your ward, click, hold this button, and then select where you wanna put the ward, right? Or again, if you just tap it, it's gonna ward the, the closest bush right next to you. So I like to have this option on the warding aim, warding aim assist. Sometimes just do it faster. All level up, make sure to have it off. The ping magnifier, make sure you have the fixed. If you have this on a uh, follow your finger, what will happen is when you try to ping on the right side and we hold the button, you see a little magnifier thing that's always kind of blocking part of your minimap. It's actually so annoying. So what you want to do is just have this option as fixed. And what happens is when you try to ping something, it will always show a little magnifier on the top left of this minimap show up on the right side. But your entire minimap right here is clean. You know, nothing is going to block any vision so you can just slide anywhere. And let's say I'm going to ping this red buff. You know, steps. I'm, I'm gonna drag this button, you know, it's gonna ping over there. So it's really, really nice to make sure, make sure you have this option as uh, fixed. Now let's move on to the best control layout that you wanna have if, you, if you're used to playing with three fingers or two fingers, okay? So most people play with three fingers. So I'm just do the three finger layout introduction. Now, what happens is how to access is you get, click on setting, click on the control, the second part, and on the bottom, there's a custom button layout. Click on this one and you will enter this hot control uh, page where you can control where you're gonna put your stuff. First, what I like to do is, because I have fat fingers. I like to click on this wheel and then 
On the left side, you can see I click on the wheel, it's it's lighting up, that means it's selected. I can turn the size to the highest, you know, have a large wheel. Uh, this is actually really nice for me because I can move the wheel on the left bottom corner uh, really, really easily. And then move this teleport a little bit closer to your wheel. This way, what will happen is, confirm, what will happen is, let's say I'm moving, right? Okay, I'm done moving, I'm about to recall. I can just tap this, like this recall button right next to my wheel. Once I want to recall, I can just easily extend my thumb and then I can click on the recall button within reach. Where if you have this button a little bit too far out, you have to drag your th left thumb, it's kind of awkward. So have it closer, but not too close, where as long as within your, the extension of your thumb, you know, let's say I'm moving this control right here, but I can just extend my thumb, you know, a little bit, I can click on recall. Whereas I don't have to drag it all the way to the center, that's kind of awkward. I just want to kind of tap it and I'm, I'm able to recall. Okay, this is where it display your current status. Let's say a amount of stack of conquer that you have or what uh, kind of effects are you being inflicted on? Are you being poisoned? Are you being disarmed? All those are gonna be displayed here. So you can just put it whatever because this is not a um, interactive button. It's just an area where it's gonna show up stuff. All this little small red buttons are champion the, the portrait lock icon where you want them to show up. So if you really want to have them, you can have them like somewhere on the screen, right? If you really want to use the portrait lock. But again, I recommend you have a clean feed. So just move them out of the way and then have the portrait lock turn off. So you, this button won't even show up. So it doesn't really matter where you put them. Same with the semi lock camera, this little icon, eye little icon here, it's a semi lock camera. Just hold it and then move it somewhere else where it's not in the middle of the screen. If you really want to use this button, what I recommend is have this on the right side. What happened is, Look, I, I can show you right here. Because right now, if you just use your right index finger, you can still uh, pan and map, move the screen. And but sometimes you use, if you are more used to the semi lock camera, it's on the top right of your screen, this little eye right here. So you can just, you know, pan and map, right? You can just slide the little eye and then do wherever you want. Look, slide the eye and then move to wherever you want. But again, what I recommend is just turn this option off and then just get really used to panning the map like this, you know, move to the right side of the screen. So it's a lot easier and you have a clean feed and you don't accidentally, you don't accidentally touch the screen because if you just have this off and you pan the map, every time you, you're writing that finger, leave the screen, your screen will be reset to default. So it's really, really convenient. So this doesn't really matter, let's move it back. And I like to have my words right here because I don't have the semi camera lock on. I have my words right here. Again, I want to make sure in the middle of my screen as much po as possible, it's clean. But most people just use their thumb to play. That's why you want to have most of your buttons on the right bottom corner where your thumb can reach. Okay, so you can easily tap them and easily use them, easily slide them. What I like to do is actually turn this skill a little bit smaller. Yeah. Why do I have this uh, button? You can see right here, a uh, really large. I have to do to the the size biggest. Because a lot of people actually always forget to use flash or forget to use ignite. You know, <laughs> the re it's too small to see and people turn to forget them for some reason. So it's again, personal preference. And also this doesn't, this makes sure you trigger. Sometimes if the button's too small, you click on it, it doesn't trigger. So I like to have those two most important buttons, the summoners, as the largest size. Um, this way you can trigger them easily. And also this one, two skill, one, two, three, four, depending on which skill are you used most frequently, you can also enlarge them. Let's say I play mostly Yasuo, Akali, all those E's, the skill three are really important for me. Let's say I play uh, Avalon. Skill three is very important for me because I can engage with it, right? You can actually increase the size of this button, the skill three, you know, because this skill, you're gonna, if, you, if you're gonna use it more often, it's, it's very good that you, ha you have this size large because then all of a sudden, it doesn't really affect any other champion you play. Like if I play Lee Sin, I'm tapping my E, just tapping my E, right? But it, let's say you're playing Yasuo, all of a sudden you can, you can dash a lot easier. You see, you can dash a lot easier because this button is the largest and this is the most important skill, right? This is the most frequently used skill. So you wanna have this on like the largest so you can click on it easily, you can slide it easily. This also works on Avalanche E, like I said, this works on a lot of people because most engages, I don't know why, it's usually skill three. <laughs> so it's, I like to have this skill a little bit larger than the rest of the skills because I tend to use them more often. Your minion attack, everything else, tower attack is default. This one you can turn a little bit larger if you have problem hitting attack buttons. If your fingers are too fat and you accidentally touch the minion attack or tower attack, you can have the attack uh, button a little bit larger. So this way you mainly just hit the center attack button. But again, this is a personal preference. Doesn't really uh, change much. The little little clock thing and then the cross, you just want to have on top because it doesn't really show up normally. This little thing allows you to drag your skill uh, to cancel them. If you don't want to, if you're aiming the skill, you don't want to cast it anymore. You can drag it to the uh, cross area and it will cancel the cast of the skill. And this one is for when your skill is under cooldown and you want to notify your team 
like, oh, this is only, uh, my ultimate is 60 seconds left. You can drag your ultimate that's under cooldown to this little clock. Uh, you will send a message to the team saying like, my ultimate is under 60 second cooldown. So this is actually really important. Have it right here. Now, regarding your flash and ignite and then, or the two summoners and your active items, I like to have them right next to my ability. This way you remind you, remind you to use them and it's easy to access. Again, you just wanna make sure it's accessible by your right thumb. This way you can tap them very, very easily. If you have it too far, because the default setting have the ignite right here, you know, it's actually somehow sometimes too far from me. That's why I can't trigger them really fast. Because in League of Legends Wall Rift, the split second is what make a difference. So you want to make sure this one is closer to where you can access them, like next to your ability. So when you use your combos, you can then tap your ignite and it'll trigger the ignite right off the bat. The active item the same way. Sometimes you only have a split second to active this item. A lot of other mobile mobile players, I like to have this one where my ward is right here because they're used to have active item over there. But again, uh, I, I put my ward over there and now I just use my thumb to activate them because it's all accessible in my thumb. Right now, if you look at my screen right here, you can see this little HUD area this is entirely accessible by my thumb. Right? Everything, everything right here, on the bottom side, you know, including the active item, including the flash, including the ignite, I can just tap them. Everything is accessible from my from my thumb. Now this ward I can use with my index finger. Um, you can use my ward on the right finger and it's pen and map with the right next finger, the right thumb. I just use it to tap abilities, tap skills, tap active items, it's all in this area. So last but not least, there's something called edge offset. This is again, a personal preference. When you drag this, it will drag the entire right side of the control, the HUD, to wherever you put it. So this option, just drag it around and in practice mode, click on save, click on quit. And this way you can experience where your thumb's gonna land. What I recommend is hold your phone like this in a, in a natural position, right? And then wherever you're, th how you're gonna play your game. Like I play my game like this, you know? Like this is, this is, where, this is how, you, how I secure my phone. And then where my thumb is gonna land on the screen naturally, because the attack button is the most frequent button you're gonna hit. You know, where my where my thumb is gonna land on the screen naturally when I tap them is where I have the center of my attack button. But you can see right now, that means my offset is a little bit to the right. Because you can see I'm constantly tapping the, the left corner of the attack button, which is not something that I prefer. So you can go over here and click on custom layout and you can move this a little bit to the center. You don't wanna move too much though. You wanna have a clean feed in the center of the screen, leave as much empty as possible. Uh, but at the same time, just train your finger a little to move a little bit to the right or move your gesture a little bit so your, your thumb naturally will rest on this attack button, you know, when you're hitting attack. So this is something that you have to get used to. That's the best hot layout that I use personally that I have a lot of success, I have a lot of comfort with. Uh, let me know in the comment section what you think. Make sure to like, subscribe, turn that bell on to all notification bells. This is Assassin Dave signing off. I'll see you guys on the Rift. Bye now. Just for the thrill of it. Nothing counterfeit with